We're going to do it. Okay, so let's get into some worship. Um, one second. Just chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> I will get to it's it myself. right now. How are you doing, Self? Oh. All right, now we're good. Here we go. Now we're going to get into some worship. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me. You heard that, Anna? Yes, I did. You heard that, Anna?
bless you. I'll still bless you in the middle of the storm, in the middle of my trial. I'll still bless you, oh God. Oh, I'll still bless you, Lord God. You're my King. You're so faithful, Lord God. I'll still bless you, Lord God. I'll still bless you. You are my God, oh God. I'll still bless your name, God. I am empty, but I 
Beautiful. Beautiful worship. <sighs> For the people who just signed in, I know my mouth is not moving with my words. We'll have to get over that. <laughs> I'm not teaching tonight, so thank heavens for that. I signed in and out three times, four times, and it wouldn't change. So I'm going to turn it right over to Pastor Ed so that um, his mouth and voice are <laughs> accurate. <laughs> I'm not too sure Go how accurate. <laughs> Hello, hey, Karen. Hey. Hello, everybody. Kathy, Catherine, everybody that we missed. Okay. Hi, everybody. Go ahead. Hi, All everybody. Right. I, it, it's great. It's great to have everybody here, Brother Timothy and and Karen and Catherine and and and, and Joanne and, and, and also Roger. It's great to see Roger. It's always great to see you, Roger. Love you, brother. Reggie. And Reggie. 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 Why am I, I keep saying Roger who, for Reggie. You know? Who is who's Roger? I don't see Roger. Roger, Roger's right on. Roger, Roger. Roger Ramchat. <laughs> Roger Ramchat. Yeah, that's it. Roger Ramchat. Uh, Reggie. Who's gonna say that? I, I keep calling him Roger. I don't know why. And um, pray for me, brother. <laughs> Ed, Ed, Eddie, Eddie, call him, call him Reginald. Reginald, he he's Reginald. one of the Reginalds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and and it's great to have Annette here and her sister. And I I think um Annette's sister wanted to pray. Did you want to open up in prayer? Well, I'm going to do the best I I feel. Okay. God bless. Dear Lord, I would like to bless the membership <coughs> and also Pastor Debbie. Uh, I forgot your Debbie, and also Pastor Ed for the wonderful things, dear Lord, that they put on earth and to know you more, Jesus, and thankful for everything, dear Lord. It enriched my life, and I, it will enrich everyone in the in the meeting. Thank you, Lord. Merci, bon Dieu. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate that so much, Lee. You can feel the spirit of God. Uh, the title of today's message, like I posted there, is Living in the Spirit. And it's important for us to know and understand, what does it mean to live in the Spirit and to, to walk in the Spirit and go by the Spirit of God? And uh, how many people here understand what it's like to live in the Spirit? Amen. It's so important for us as believers and children of God to live in the Spirit and walk after the Spirit of God. Why is it important? I'm going to ask questions, so be willing to unmute yourself and speak up, and uh, that's part of the Bible study here. <coughs> um, it's always great. Why do you feel, or why do you believe that it's always good to be living in the Spirit? Anybody? It's our open door to the Lord. If we're not living in the Spirit, we're missing that opportunity. I, I believe, and I certainly may stand corrected that it's our responsibility to to bring ourselves to that place and to carry ourselves in that place as much as possible and that would be being a, a christ following christian my take on it you, and, and you're so true on that because i uh a pastor can can encourage you and to to live in the spirit, walk after the spirit. But it is your responsibility to walk after the spirit and live in the spirit of God. It's your responsibility to grow in God. And if the pastor's responsibility is to bring you the message and bring you the tools that you need to grow in the Lord. But it's your responsibility to take what you've learned and to build a good, strong foundation in your life in Christ with the tools that the pastor gives you to grow in it. 
no, you have your free will, your free agency to make choices to do whatever you want in your life. So it's up to you how spiritual you want to be in Christ. Where you want to be at in your walk with Jesus Christ. If you're happy just going to church and sitting in church and sitting in the pew, just taking in the service, then that's where you want to be. Then that's where you're going to be. But if you hunger and thirst after righteousness and you hunger and thirst after God, and you want to put God first in your life and everything, then you hunger to get stronger in the Lord and grow stronger in God. Then it's your responsibility to nurture on that. It, it, it's like going to the YMCA to work out. If you're going to the Y and you're paying for a membership at the YMCA and you're going to go work out, then you should go and work out. What does it profit you to go to the Y and pay for a membership at the Y and go to the Y and sit there and watch Brother Timothy work out? What good is it going to get you strengthened if you're watching Brother Timothy work out and you're not working out yourself? You're doing yeah. great studies. You can't. You can't grow. Your muscles aren't going to get stronger just by watching Timothy lifting weights and getting stronger. Your legs ain't going to get stronger if you're not pushing on those leg weights to get stronger. You're just sitting there watching Brother Timothy do all the work. You're not getting that strong, but Brother Timothy is getting stronger each and every time he works out. And that's our faith. The Bible said faith without works is dead. Dead. So we need and. to exercise our faith. We need to exercise our strength in the spirit of God. Um, how, when you listen to a message from a, from from the word of the, of the word of God from a minister of God, what inclines your ear more? A minister of God that's preaching the word of God in the spirit. Or a minister of God that's preaching the word of God out of their own thoughts and intent. In the spirit. In the spirit. Because from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if you let the spirit take control, and you let the Holy Ghost take control of your life when you minister the word of God and the anointing of God to come upon you when you preach the word of God, there's so much more meaning behind what you're sharing and what you're preaching and your teaching when you have the spirit of God working within your life amen, amen. Uh, mm -hmm. earlier joanne i uh, mike was was behind you with a light shining a light over your head above there and he says you know if you have ideas or thoughts you put the light on and you said you said oh he's trying to make me look smarter than i really am <laughs> well mike didn't know my message for today or what i was going to share within my message today but i want to i want i want to illustrate something here it says here this is what i'm going to say here when the spirit of the living god dwells with inside you you're whole, you're a whole lot smarter than you think mm -hmm. understand this when you have the spirit of god living with inside you you're a whole lot smarter than what you think because when you have the Spirit of God within you and you're putting on the mind of Christ and you're sharing the word of God, you're not sharing your words, but you're sharing, thus saith the Lord thy God. You're speaking the word of God. What was the word of God? How did we receive the word of God? Anybody know? How did we receive the word of God? I kind of hear somebody, but I don't really hear them. Through our ears and into our hearts. Okay, through our ears and into our hearts. <laughs> but how did we receive the word of God in the beginning? In the very beginning, does anybody on here know how did we receive the word of God? Soft, still voice. Pastor Timothy, how did we receive the word of God in the beginning? Back in the time of Moses and, 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 and Noah and all that, how did we receive the word of God? You're muted. Yes. Uh, previously, they, they, they have the word of God through dreams, uh, revelations, and uh, sometimes uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the environment surrounding them, they receive the word of God from those things that is where the little i know about that right 
but the word of God itself, the Bible, how do we receive the word? How do we receive the Bible? The Bible came to us by the by given to man, but by how did the man receive the word of God? Through the spirit of God. Here, here it. Oh, yeah. Right? It was it was brought to us through the spirit of God. Right? It was brought to, to us, the, the, the written word. It was inspired. It was set on show the, the testimony of the people, but it was through the Spirit of God. So the Word of God, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God is a spirit. <clears throat> right? Yeah. So the Word of God is spiritually given to us, spiritually sent from God. Because it's God's word to us. So we need to have that indwelling within us. When we have the word within us and it comes alive in us because we have the spirit of God living. And the spirit of God is a living thing. It's not a dead thing. Right? The joy of the Lord is my what? Strength. Strength. Right? And the spirit of God is joy. The spirit of God brings us joy. Right. So it's it gives us joy. We have to have the joy of the Lord. But when this. OK, let's read here. And um, John 16, John 16, verses 13 and 14. John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. So if you want to write this down, you can have it there. I'll be it then when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you in all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall be he speak. And he will show you all things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and I shall show it unto you. So see, the spirit of God is truth. And it's come, and he says here in verse 30, he will guide us into all truth. Not part truth, but all truth. When we follow after the Spirit of God, and we let the Spirit of God live in us and, and flow through us, and we bring the Word of God, we're bringing the truth of God. Right? It says, that the Bible says, be not deceived by everyone in doctrine. Right? So we need to know the truth of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. We need to know what thus saith the Lord. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice, know why the voice will they follow. Huh. Right? How do you know the voice of the Lord? If you don't have the spirit of the Lord within you, you don't have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, how do you really know the spirit of God? How do you really know and understand and can decipher the word of God and the voice of God if you don't have the spirit within you? The Bible says, repent and be ye baptized for the remission of our sin, and not long after you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. It's our guide. It's our direction. And you're just going to take a trip without a world map? If you're going to go to somewhere you've never been before, are you going to go without a world map? No. no some people. No, no, no. Journey, They'll study that roadmap before they go on that journey so they'll know where every little gas station, little restaurant, little rest area is along the way, and they won't get lost along the way because they have the roadmap. This is our roadmap, the Word of God. And we're led by the Spirit, right? When God told Moses to lead the people out of Egypt, did he, got on, did he go on his own strength? No, 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 no. No, what strength did he go in? Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of the Lord. When God asked Noah to build an ark, and Noah's never built an ark before in his life, he had to do it a certain direction, a certain way, for a purpose, right? And did he do it yeah. his own strength? No, no, no. no, no. He did in the strength of the spirit. Now, when the animals came to the ark, did Noah call the animals to the ark? No, no, no. God selected them, me right. and women. Mm. Right. 
God connected them. God spoke to those animals to come to the ark through his spirit. He spoke to them to come. When you asked, before you knew the Lord, was it yourself that brought yourself to God? No. No man cometh unto the Father except through Christ, right? Yes. How did he come through Christ? But by the leading of the Spirit. Spirit. Yes. We from birth have the Spirit of God. That, that, Eddie, I'm sorry. That's exactly, I was just going to ask you. Are we not born with the Spirit? We're born with the Spirit, right? But there's a difference between having an understanding and a touch and, and, and a feeling of the Spirit than there is in, of the indwelling of the Spirit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm just, you know? I'm just yeah. I, I I have like I've got I have a couple of questions about everything. Sure. Like the one one is I I like I believe that we are all we're all born, we're all a miracle and we're all born with the spirit. That's what I believe. But now I have a question about are we not are we not saved? Are we not um are we not in 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 a good place? If we have not been baptized, like at the actual physical baptism. Here, here's what it says. The Bible says, first thing it says, what's the first thing it says to do? Repent, right? Mm -hmm. So before we even think about baptism, we first got to do what? Repent. Repent. So we're not, the Bible says there, there's none righteous, no, not one. Our, our righteousness as, as as filthy rags, right? There's none righteous among us. There's none holy amongst us. We have all have sin and come short of the glory of God. So God says he, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sin. Yes. So if we were perfect and we didn't have to, we didn't have sin, then we wouldn't have to repent and we wouldn't have to even worry about baptism. You understand what I'm saying? Now, some people might have died before they had a chance to get baptized. But the Bible says even Jesus himself fulfilled the word of God by being what? Baptized. By, by being baptized. Baptism, what does it represent? When you get baptized, what does it represent? It represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. In this way, Jesus died upon the cross. He was buried. And he rose on the third day, right? Right. And the newness. And he even told his disciples, do not touch me because I have not gone to my father. Don't touch me at this point because I, I, I'm in the state that I'm in. When we get baptized and we're dunked under water, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, so when we're dunked under, we're dying to ourselves. We're being buried with Christ and when we rise out of the water, we're rising in with the newness of Jesus Christ in our life. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth within me. We're to die to ourselves daily. Yes, yes, Pastor Debbie. Karen, what was your question? That, am, I, am I not? Okay. I've never been baptized. Okay. Yeah. So... To make a long story short, both my children have, you know that. The Bible says, let me just help you, hon. The Bible does say to believe and be baptized. So, you know, I mean, there's some religions that say that if you're not baptized, you're going to go to hell. Well, I don't believe that at all. I don't because that's that not either. scriptural. Okay. Um, when you get baptized, as Eddie said, it's an outward uh, profession of your inward faith. So when you get baptized, and I, we can baptize you, honey, right here. If you want to go down by the beach, we'll baptize you right in the water. No worries, no problems. I'd rather do it in my pool. I don't want to go in that water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, a pool anywhere we can, you know, a lot of the hotels will let us use the pool to do that. You can get baptized in your bathtub. I've baptized people in bathtubs. There you go. So there's no worry about that. What it is, is it's just a profession. It's showing people the profession of your 
faith. If someone died, they got saved and they died the next day or they died a little while. It does, they're not going to go to hell because they weren't baptized. What it is, is you're professing your faith. Okay? So it seems to be bothering you. My question is, am I, am I professing yeah. that to people? Or does God, like, does God not love me the same? Of course he loves you. Yeah. But it is something that Jesus himself did. And we want to be followers of him. So when everyone was getting baptized, they... They got they got dipped and baptized long before Jesus came onto the scene. Because I, I even now why, the Jewish people I don't know why I was never baptized. The Jewish people I, I have no idea. Get baptized. The Jewish people submerge themselves every month. Especially the women. They submerge themselves every month. So in those days the they uh, John the Baptist was baptizing people because he was a forerunner for Jesus. Okay. So he was baptizing them for their sin, but they kept sinning anyway. But when Jesus came forth, he goes, I can't baptize you. There's the, the you're the lamb of God. You're the, you're, you should be baptizing me. And Jesus says, no, I'm putting Stop this in my own words. Okay. He basically said, no, um, I, this must happen. I have to be baptized. So, and then it's, the Bible tells us to believe and be baptized. So for you, it sounds like it's on your heart to get baptized. Um, a lot of people don't get baptized. Number one, they're, if it's a full immersion, they're afraid of water. Some people don't want to be dunked down. I didn't want to be dunked down. It took a lot. Annette, were you there when I finally got baptized? Oh, in yes. The pool in the middle? <laughs> I got sprinkled uh, numerous times. I got sprinkled in the Catholic faith because I became Catholic after being Jewish. I got sprinkled. And that's okay, too. Don't let people tell you, oh, that's bad. Okay? So, and then... I really wanted to be submersed, but I didn't want anybody to submerse me. And it was terrible. Everybody was waiting. People were all getting baptized. And I was standing there and like, don't touch me. Don't, don't you touch me. I'll dunk myself. Like it was crazy. It took a long time for me to allow myself to get dunked. So I was afraid of water. That's one of the reasons why I didn't go under. And then I finally did. But to me, from looking at you and hearing your heart and seeing your tears, maybe God is telling you mm -hmm. that it's time. And if it was just a random thing, then I wouldn't be saying this to you. But I was listening to you. I was listening to Pastor Eddie, and I had to interject because... There's a time for everything. There's a season for everything. Yes. And I think that it might be your season now to make your next step in your walk with God. Right. And right. all right. of you, it's, it's a form of obedience. He says said, it, we do it. You've known me, uh, you've known me a long time. And I've, always, I've walked with God mm -hmm. like, like, since I was a child. I don't understand why I was never christened or baptized. I, I I don't understand. Both of my children were like, they were bapt, they were christened, and then they were dedicated. Like, I don't know why I was never christened. I I have no idea. Well, you know what? Don't worry about what was, and let's take care of what is now. Timothy, you want to say something, hon? Yes, Timothy? I just want to add. I just want to add something to. You. Uh, Sister Karen, if you have your Bible there, you can read Deuteronomy chapter 30, the verse 15 to 16. Write it down. Deuteronomy chapter 30, the verse 15 to 16. I I'll read it for you. Today, I am giving you a choice between good and evil, between life and death. 
if you obey the commands of the Lord your God, which I give you today, if you love him, obey him, and keep all his laws, then you will prosper and become a nation of many people. The God, the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are about to occupy. So what it's telling you is that today, as you are with this ministry, as you are here discussing the word of God, it means you love him. That is why you are here. You have made a perfect choice. So there is time, like Pastor Debbie said, there is time for you to be baptized. Don't worry about the baptism now. You will definitely will be baptized. Even if you have not had the opportunity to baptize, remember, there were some two thieves who were crucified with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. One on the left, one on the right. At the end of the whole thing, one of them went to paradise with Jesus Christ. He was never baptized. You are still having life. You are still dining with people. You are still with us. What it means is that what your life that has changed. Your, life your everything changed. is okay now. Amen. Thank you. Amen, yeah. Timothy. Amen. You got that, Karen? It's really yeah. good what he just said. Yeah, thank you. So very you, much. Um, we're here for you. You want to be baptized? We'll take you. We'll find a pool. Somebody's got a pool. My daughter's got a pool in her backyard. We'll take you somewhere. And we'll baptize you, and let's get it, if that's what you want, let's get it done. But it is, it's scriptural. Believe and be baptized. And I'll, while Eddie's teaching more, I'll, does anybody know exactly where that scripture is? And that, you, what about you? <laughs> you always know where scriptures are. Sorry? Believe and be baptized. This. Believe and be baptized. Where is that? I'm getting it. Okay, where are you getting it? I, I just want to share that. You see, Karen, it's it, like what Pastor David said. Baptism is an outward confession of an inward commitment that you've made to God that you would live to the best of your ability in the Spirit of God. Not in your own spirit, but in the Spirit of God that you would live to the best of your ability for God. It's been just an outward confession. I found when I got baptized, it gave me a great joy within me with getting baptized, knowing that I was going and being submersed and dying to myself and rising a new creation created in Christ Jesus. It gave me such a joy and an inner strength within me with the Holy Spirit. It brought me closer to God because I did. I was doing what Christ did, even himself did himself. And I'm following what the scripture wants me to do for him in my walk with God. People are different, like Pastor Demi says. You know, uh, there are different places in their growth in the Lord, right? And some people haven't been baptized. But for, I knew for myself with being, um, being called to the ministry that through getting baptized, it was strengthening my walk and strengthening my testimony in God and strengthening my ministry for, with the Lord. So, okay, you know. so Mark 16, 15. 16. Mark 16. It says, and he said, uh, Mark 16, 15. Okay. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Also, uh, Acts 2 38. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Timothy, thank you. So Acts 238. Yes, Acts 238. And um, Peter told them, believe, repent, and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Thank you, Timothy. So, and there's other scripture too. 
Okay, but now, now I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm going to question this. So, we're supposed to be forgiven of our sins because Jesus gave His life for us. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. why do we have to be? See, I'm just, I'm, I'm not comprehending. I mean, I went ahead and both my children, I, I baptized them when they were like a couple of months old. That's just what I believed was the right thing to do. But uh, be, being that maybe I'm trying to defend the fact that I'm not, I feel guilty or something. But we're supposed to be forgiven of our sins because Christ went on the cross for us. So why do we have to be baptized in order for our sins to be forgiven or washed away? And your sins, no, your sins are forgiven. As soon as you're saved, your sins are forgiven. You, your sins don't get forgiven because you're baptized. Baptism is your profession of faith. Okay. It's showing that you are a believer and you're following Jesus. Jesus got baptized. He wants people to get baptized because when you go down, you come up a new creation in Christ. That's what he wants. Your, your sins are forgiven. The other thing is, and I know this is another touchy subject, but baptizing babies is nowhere in the Bible. That's a Catholic practice that they put into effect that is not in the Bible. Jesus was not baptized as a baby. a baby. Jesus was dedicated at eight days old. You bring your child to God and you give your child back to God. But that, in order to be baptized, what are the scriptures that we kept reading tonight? Who knows? What are you supposed to do? Do what and be baptized? What's the first thing? Repent. Repent. Joanne? Mm -hmm. And then what's next? Be, be Okay. How can a baby believe? So because they're because they're born yes. pure. They're they they're born pure. They've already got the spirit. And I believe every child is born of God. It's pure when they're born. Okay, but they cannot believe. So you dedicate your children. You baptize once they're old enough to comprehend. Okay. My son was five years old, Michael, when he got baptized because he knew, he understood what Jesus wanted of him. It all depends on their comprehension. They might be 12, they could be 15, they could be five like Michael once they can comprehend. But we dedicate them. But what you get, listen, all of my kids were baptized Catholic. All of them. See, I'm, and I'm not Catholic. And then I realized afterward. I'm not, yeah. I'm not Catholic. My children, I'm Protestant. But, but both, both William and Melissa were baptized. They had their christening at the Islington United Church in Toronto. And then I had them dedicated at Garrison Road Church. They had yeah. both. Okay, so you did the same. thing. So at Garrison Road... That's where you had your kids dedicated, so that's perfect. So, Eddie, go ahead. I'm sorry, you want to I'm, continue? I'm no, sorry, no. I'm Eddie. I'm really sorry for intervening oh, no. like that. Don't, don't be sorry. What, what the topic we're talking about is living in the spirit, right? So, who am I to get upset that we're going by the leading of the spirit of God at this moment? You see, this is by the whole teaching about walking in the spirit and being guided by the spirit of God. We have to listen to what the spirit says because why? <laughs> There's a purpose you're asking these questions because the spirit is at this point wanting you to understand and to know, right? Now, even with baptism, you look at baptism to understand baptism, water baptism, it gives into a whole spiritual aspect of things in our life jesus did it because it was spiritually sound to do it it was scripturally sound to do it according to the scripture and jesus says i come not to put away the scripture or to put away the law but to fulfill the law and to fulfill the scripture right so jesus was moving in the spirit wanted to fulfill the scripture for us this year now, if we turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 
and verses 10 through 14. It says, but God has re revealed them unto us by his spirit. So God will reveal a lot of things to us by the spirit. There's things that we don't understand and we can't comprehend. But when we're led by the spirit and we allow the spirit of God to move within us, God's spirit will reveal things to us. There's things when we preach the word or we read the message of God or given a sermon by God, when we get in the spirit, God reveals things to us that we never knew before, brings it to our understanding. For the spirit searches all things. It searches all things, yea, the depth, the deep things of God. The spirit gets into the deeper things of God that we may not even comprehend or understand. The Bible says that we see through a dark gauntlet. But when we get to heaven, all things will be revealed that need to be revealed because we'll no longer have a haze in front of us. Everything will be revealed to us and we'll know all things when we get to heaven. True? Okay. Those are the real deep things that we may not understand while we're here on this earth. But God will reveal these things when we're in heaven because when we get there, our minds will be totally different than what they are here and we'll be able to handle the things that we didn't understand from before. As a child, as a child grows up, you only give them so much that they can understand and and under and, and, uh, and grasp. And as they get older, you teach them more in depth and deeper things. Daddy, why is the sky blue? Mommy, why is the grass green? Why do birds chirp? Why do dogs bark? You know, they ask these things and we tell them answers. But when there's they don't ask deep things and it's like understanding when a child, when it comes to the point when it comes to when it has to repent, it's when it comes to the age of understanding what repentance is and that they have sinned. When you come to realization that you've sinned and you know you've sinned, that's when it's time to repent. We, we as adults and Christians, we have to understand, too, in the spirit that when we repent the first time we ask God in our life, that's not the end of repentance. We should die to self daily. We should repent daily of sins in our life that we've wronged knowingly and unknowingly we could have sinned we could have had a thought in the back of our mind and not knowing that but not speak it outwardly but we had a wrong thought or something we need to repent of those things even the things that we don't know that we've done wrong is good for us to repent repentance is helping us to grow stronger in christ and get closer to god for what man knoweth the things of a man saveth the spirit of a man which is in him so we know a lot of things of the world. We know a lot of worldly things, but God wants us to know more of the spiritual things. The way for us to get to know more of the spiritual things is get in touch and close to the spirit of God. Walk in the spirit. Walk after the spirit, not after the what? The flesh. The flesh. Uh, You're muted, uh, Joanne. I couldn't hear you. I seen your mouth, but I couldn't hear you. <laughs> We walk after the spirit. The Bible tells us walk after the spirit. Don't walk after the flesh. The Desire flesh. the things of the spirit of God. Seek after the things of God and the spirit of God. Right? The spirit. It's so important that we understand what the spirit of God is for. Uh, save the spirit of that which is man is, is him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. We don't understand the mind of God. We'll never understand the mind of God until we get to heaven and we're at the throne of Christ that we'll understand the full mind of God. Why, Lord, did I go through what I went through? Why did I go through the trials? Why did I go through the tribulations? Why did I go through this sickness? Why did this happen to me? Why, why, why? Well, <laughs> we'll know all the answers when we get to heaven. We may not know it here. We don't know the mind of Christ and why he does. Lord, why has it been now? We are here. We are what? You're 2000 and what? Oh. 2024? And we're still waiting on Christ to come. When, when, when did Christ go to be with his father? How long ago? Sometimes we ask, well, how, how long should we tarry, Lord? How long should we wait before you're coming? God has a plan. God has a purpose, right? Uh, let me go here. Verse 13. Which things also we speak not in the word which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. 
uh, comparing spiritual things yeah. with spiritual, right? And that's the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will witness and minister stuff and give us witness on spiritual things to do with spiritual things and understanding. But the natural man receiveth not the things that of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritual discerned. A lot of things that we try to understand in the spirit is, is spiritually discerned. When you we, when you feel that you have to pray for somebody, Joanne, you've done this before. I feel in the spirit on the pray for you, brother. And you've sent me messages and you probably send other people messages. I feel in the spirit to pray for you, not knowing what for or what reason you need to pray for them. But you feel in the spirit within you that you need to pray for that person, not knowing why. But God knows why. And the Spirit of God knows why he's put in your heart to pray that person. When you have on your heart, you know, to minister to somebody and witness the gospel, Jesus Christ or somebody, you have an irk in your heart that you really need to talk to that person and tell them about the plan of salvation. Because the Spirit brings it to your heart to minister to that person. In our own flesh, we don't want to go out and talk to any people and, 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 and bring them all into the church. But the Spirit leads us. As the Spirit gives us direction, as the Spirit guides us, you know, who put the calling upon your life to be called to be a minister of God? Who put God. that calling on you? God. God. And how did he put it in you, that calling? Through, spirit. Through his Spirit. Through the Spirit. The Spirit gave you that unction. Like, Lord, I feel a calling. Mm -hmm. God, you know, God spoke to them. God spoke to your heart. God spoke to your spirit through the spirit, through the word, which word it comes from the spirit of God, right? Ah, this is wonderful. I thank God for this. We need to walk daily in the spirit of God. We need to strive to get stronger in the spirit of God. When we move by the spirit and we work with the spirit of God, then People start to see what in you. The Holy Spirit, they see God in us. In our God in us. Yeah. Right, right. They don't see just Joanne. They don't just see Raj. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't just see Anit, uh, I mean, Annette, you know, or Timothy or Pastor Debbie. They see the Spirit of God within you. What draws them to you for, for them to you to for you to minister? The spirit draws them. Right? When 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 God leads his people, he leads them by his spirit. spirit. Okay. Um there is no one who magnifies Christ as the Holy Spirit does. His most intent, intense desire is to reveal Jesus Christ to us. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal Christ to us each and every day stronger than the day before. You know, it, it, it's, it's so that we need to understand that Christ needs to dwell up within us. Now we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. And, and this is also has, I believe, to do also with when it comes to the part of um, maybe Karen, my help Karen a bit uh, with with the with being baptized as well, too. And and I'll, I'll share a bit of that when I finish the scripture verse. And it says, verse 13 says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believe ye were sealed. Okay, remember that word, sealed, with that Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purpose, possession, unto the praise of his glory. I look at with being baptized, it helps us to be sealed closer to God. It helps seal us 
with the Lord because we're willing to be buried with him to rise in his likeness. We're willing to die with him to be risen in his likeness. It's no longer I that liveth, Christ that liveth in me. I walk after the spirit as Christ is in the spirit. I just, I, I, my earnest thing is to get closer to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then these things shall be added unto you. Added unto you. Seek it. You have to seek first the kingdom of God. What is sitting in the kingdom of God? The spirit of God. We need to seek after the things of God. Being sealed with God is so important to be sealed with God. Not only in our confession of our faith. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> and asking the Lord to come into our lives and forgive us of our sins and that there. And be sealed that way, but also with when we get sealed in the spirit of God. You know, and we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit within our lives. And we live after the Holy Spirit. When you minister the word of God, always seek the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, what would you have me to speak to the people? What do you want me to teach to the people? Because are you my people? No. 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 Whose people are you? God. We are God's people. God's people. So when I, when we as men and women of God and ministers of God, when we minister the word of God, we're ministering the word of God to God's people, not our people. So it can't be thus say at Evans, but it has to be thus say the Lord thy God. Thus thy say God. the spirit of God. Why do we, we don't, Worship prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists. We're not to worship them, but we follow them as they follow Christ, as Christ leads them in the spirit. We follow the teachings as they're taught by God through the spirit of God to give us the word of God. When a prophet of God brings forth a prophecy, it's coming from the spirit of God from where? The throne of God to us. You understand what I'm saying? So we need to follow the spirit of God in those that are in leadership with us, you know, and, and, and hold them up in high esteem. The Bible says too much is given, much is required. And it, it says to honor those to whom there, there is honor due, give on, the honor to those whom honor is due, right? And I give a lot of honor First to God and the Spirit of God, and I give a great lot of honor to Pastor Debbie as my pastor and as my leader and as my umbrella in the ministry uh, for the least of them ministries. God has given her a calling and a position as, as a leadership in this ministry to help guide us. And how does she do that? Pastor Debbie, do you do that in the flesh? No, if I try to, it fails. <laughs> right. So you know, so totally by leading by the spirit. Right. You lead us through by the spirit of God. And what's your desires, what's your heart's desire for us in the ministry? To succeed and, and follow through with what God created you for. Each one is created. You all have your own gifts. And to see you identify those gifts to walk in the spirit following what God is guiding you to do. And my job is to just try to help keep you on track and God will show me. Sometimes I don't want to hear what he's showing me. And sometimes I have to confront you and I don't want to, but I'm listening to the spirit. And if it was my flesh, it would be different when I do it in the spirit, even though I'm afraid to come forth and maybe say something, I feel re relief, released. When God tells you to do something by the Spirit and you don't, 
you feel a heaviness until mm -hmm. you actually do it. Once you've done it, that is released. And okay. and I and I know that that's very true. It's not just me. That's of any person that's trying to walk in the spirit of God. And, and what happened to Jonah when he didn't listen to the spirit of God? He got he so was punished. He, uh, he was punished by a big well. fish. <laughs> and where did Jonah end up in the end anyway? Exactly where God wanted him to be. In fact, the spirit led the way <laughs> to go and vomit him at uh, Nandive. <laughs> right. right. So see, sometimes when we don't want to, want to do and listen to the spirit of God, God wants us to be in a certain place in our walk in him, in our life. Mm -hmm. And when we even try to run away from God, you can't run from God. God's still no. going to bring you back to where he right. wanted you to be right. in the first place. So why fight God? Why fight the spirit of God when the spirit is leading you to do something, to preach a message or to, to do what God has want you to do? Just say, here I am, Lord, use me. Lead me to that ark. Lead me to that promised land. You know, what? what is the biggest thing you want to hear when you stand before God? What is the biggest thing you want to hear? Can anybody tell me what's the biggest thing you want to hear? Joanne. I want, well done, my faithful servant. Yes. I want to right. know you with me. And that's my prayer too. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I never want the Lord to say to me, depart from me, you wicked worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Or let's spin that a little bit. Okay, if I may. And hopefully Pastor Debbie won't give me trouble for this. Let me spin this a little bit. I never want the Lord to say to me, depart from me, me. You never knew me. Not that, far from you who work in equity, I never knew you, but no, you never knew me. And how is it that we would never know him? Is we never give him a chance and we never try to get to know the Lord through the spirit of God, through his word, through prayer, through fasting, through being dedicated to God, through sacrifices in our lives, through making a commitment, through dying to ourselves daily, to renewing our mind daily by the washing of the water of the word, by putting the word not only in here, but in our hearts, that we grow strong in God. My prayer for everyone here on a strong note is to grow stronger daily and closer to God daily. I used to be an alcoholic. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be involved in crime and in and out of trouble with the law and in prison before. I know God can change a life. God has changed my life from what I used to be. I used to have a trucker's mouth. I used to be really bad and really full of a lot of hate and anger, bitterness and sin in my life. And then when I knew I gave my life to the Lord and I knew when I got baptized and I died to myself and I died in myself daily, then I'm getting stronger and closer to God. My desire is to get close to God, to help you to get closer to God. You know, and I know that's Pastor Debbie's prayer for each and every one of us too in this ministry, that we get closer to God and that we seek after God and our desire is after the things of the spirit of God. So I want to just encourage everyone in closing tonight that you seek God with your most holy faith. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye the Lord while he yeah. may be found. Not that God is lost, but seek the Lord as if he was lost to find him. Hunt him down like a buried treasure, like fine gold that you want, the riches of heaven, the riches of glory. You want the riches of God himself, not the riches of the streets paved with gold and beautiful temples or this, that, the next thing. That's not what I'm getting at. But the beauty and this is the gold of just being with God in heaven, our creator, to sit at his feet 
at his throne and set at his feet to worship him in person, in trueness, and full spirit. You know? And that's my cry and my desire for each and every one of us that we want and desire and love to get closer to God. Because I tell you, the closer you get to God, the closer God can get to you. And I, I just say these things and our blessed Lord's name. And I pass it back to Pastor Debbie. Unless anybody has any questions. And Karen, if you have any more questions, if you, we love you. Never feel that you can't ask any questions. Uh, you're not ever interrupting the service by doing this. It, it, it adds to the service because we like to go by the Spirit of God and the lead in the Spirit. And if this whole Bible study was on helping you to get a little bit closer to God, then that's the important thing that we go by the Spirit of God and the lead in the Spirit of God. Pastor Debbie? Amen. Yeah, this whole service was led by the Spirit. So if you're wondering, like, what does that mean? Like, you know, he was teaching on le being led by the Spirit, and it was all led by the Spirit. Every Everybody who was pitching in was saying different things, sharing scripture, Karen, the stuff that you were asking. That isn't on the, any of us. That was God's Spirit leading all of us to say and do what happened tonight. And when you were saying, what is it that you want God to do what is the first thing you want to see or hear when you get to heaven and yes I want to hear him say well done good and faithful servant I'm not quite sure he's going to say it in those words that's the way we put it into our English language this is what I want to have when I get to heaven can you see that wow you see Jesus holding that person this is the, I want him to say I want him in my way of thinking to say Come here, honey. You did a yeah. great job. Let me just see you. That's that, like, okay, well done, good and faithful servant. I know that's how it's written in scripture. I just believe that Jesus is going to say what it takes to minister to my heart. And I'm a touchy, feely, peace loving person. So for me to have him put his arms out like that and just grab me. And say, come here, honey. You did what I wanted you to do. You, Yes, you messed up. But let's not even talk about those things. Come here and hold me in his arms. To me, that's the same as saying, well done, good and faithful servant. And, and I believe that, you know, that's what I want. I want to see. I just want to see God happy with whatever he's given me on this earth. And through trials and tribulations and problems and issues and buffeting coming against me. I want him to see that I never gave up. Try almost gave up, just like a lot of us almost gave up, but we're here yeah. and we're not giving up and we won't give up because why what Eddie was preaching, the spirit, we're living in the spirit and the spirit grabs hold of us and once that happens you are connected you are one with god like when a husband and wife become one and now you're one flesh you're not just one flesh you're one spirit well we are one with god and to try to be obedient to his commands whatever you know like what Karen was asking about the being baptized. Karen, don't worry about what you did and didn't do. Don't worry about it. I don't know why I wasn't baptized. Yeah, you can question that. What is important is, is God telling you now that hmm, maybe I need to get baptized? Maybe I should. And then if it is, and that's what you're feeling, don't let any of us coerce you. All we're doing is showing you scripture. And you make that decision. But I believe that tonight was being used to talk to you, Karen, and anybody else. But there's different things that happen every time we have Bible study. Sometimes we stick right to exactly what we were going to talk about. But tonight <laughs> is what we were going to talk about. It, it is exactly what, what Pastor Eddie was going to talk about, living in the Spirit, following the Spirit. And that's what we did tonight. Amen. All of us, Amen. we followed what God wanted us to do. Yes, Eddie. 
Um, Pastor, I mean, when you showed that picture, it just reminded me. There, there's a song. That, the song that they, um, you played it. I, I try, I, I'm trying to remember the song, but I can't remember the name of the song now. Can you believe that? Uh, it, 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 people say it's that, that the lost song of Elvis. Oh, the um, oh yeah, uh, hands, the hands, one, one pair yeah. of hands, two pa in the song, one pair of hands, one pair of hands. Now, if you look in the song, if you listen to that song, you bring up the video for it, and and, and this is this is really funny. I think I showed Pastor Debbie, but in that song, they have a picture of Jesus holding a person in his arms, a guy in his arms. No, the 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 one with the yeah, like that. But there was a of a guy. I know, but this is still another one too. See, yeah. Yeah, and in that picture. that picture of one pair of hands with the Jesus holding the guy in his arms, if I take off my glasses, no word of a lie, and I, you do a side profile, it looks identical to me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. if you, uh, yeah. Pause it. You, if I take my glasses off and you look at the side profile, that picture of the guy in Jesus' arms, I have it on my phone, looks identical to me. And it's like Put this. It right on there. Yeah, you know, it's 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 pretty it's pretty wicked, you know. I can only imagine. That's my favorite song. Oh yeah, Aki, okay. that's a beautiful song. I love that song. It's my favorite. Yeah. Okay, are we end are we ending in prayer? prayer or? Thank you very I'm much, just gonna Eddie fight. and Debbie. Hang on, hang on, Timothy, Timothy, Debbie. Eddie, thank thank you very much for all your. And if you have any more questions, Karen, feel free to ask. We're, we're here. We love you, and we're we're no here going. to help you. We're here to help you in any way we're we can. Here. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Let's just finish with this song, okay? On the sea, one pair of hands made the sun and the moon. Every bird, every flower, every tree. One pair of hands on the valleys, the ocean, the rivers, and the sand. Those hands are so strong, so when life goes wrong, put your faith into one pair of hands. One pair of hands heal the sick. One pair of hands raise the dead. One pair of hands. On the raging storm And thousands of people were fed On her hands said I love you And those hands were nailed to a tree Those hands are so strong So when life goes wrong Put your faith to one pair of hands Those hands are so strong So when life goes wrong Put your faith into
Amen. Amen. All right. Where are you? <laughs> there we go. I just had to play that since you were talking about it. Yeah, but that's so Debbie, true, huh? Debbie, today I was at this um this older lady's house. She's got Alzheimer's and and I I take my cell phone and I play music on YouTube for her and I played this song this afternoon. I I that's wow. I played the song this afternoon. <laughs> that's funny. Well, see yeah. now that's called living in the spirit. Yeah, that's, that's what that's all about. People think it's some big fancy thing. It's just walking in the spirit every day, whatever you do, always. Every day, walking in the spirit. And you can't go wrong when you walk in the spirit. As soon as you know that things are starting to get crazy, you know that you're a little out of line. And then that's where you have to do smack yourself and get back in line because it happens to all of us. Okay, I we're going to finish now because it's... I just, I, I'm, I'm sorry again. I'm, I, I'm, I interrupt all the time. I'm like, I'm so rude. I'm apologizing, but I just feel like this was like a real message for me tonight because how could all of this happen tonight? And that song you just played this, and I was listening to that this afternoon. I feel like well, God's talking to you. God is, you know, it's like the old term for when somebody wanted to date someone and they did all these different wonderful things to call them and get them to start to pay attention to them and eventually have them become their bride or something. It was calling, wooing them, drawing them near. And that's what God is doing, I believe, with you, is he's wooing you, he's bringing you closer because he has a plan. Uh, like, we, he has a plan for all of us, but something special for you. And you need to just keep listening to what, his spirit is saying to you. And I know it's not, you know, uh, others could comment on that too. You know what I'm going through right now about my son. I could just. You know, and, and Karen, I, I don't know much about you a whole lot, but I do know this. When, when Pastor Debbie asked me to, prepare a message for today for Bible study. 